Hey guys, I'm Adam Caesar. Today we're going to be talking about Ben Wheatley's new film, Free Fire, and as always, we're going to share a book recommendation, actually a couple book recommendations this week. But today's question that I want you to answer down in the comments, and I mean this sincerely, do you like John Denver? Okay, public service announcement up front. This is the first film I'm going to discuss, I pretty much think ever, in like 35, 36 videos, that is not a horror film. It is made by Ben Wheatley, who is kind of a new wave genre titan. He made films like Sightseers, Kill List, The Field in England, uh, Down Terrace, High Rise. And if you want to hear me talk about any of those films, I did a High Rise video a couple months ago, in which I did like kind of like a career retrospective thing. I'll throw that card up in the corner or put it in the description or whatever. So I'm not really going to do that now. And if you're here because you want horror fiction and horror uh, film reviews, you can check out the rest of my channel. We just passed a thousand subscriptions, and I know that's not huge in the whole YouTube game, but I'm an old man and a thousand sounds like a lot to me, so thank you. All right, on with the review. So Free Fire, and I say this a lot in these videos, I didn't, I avoided trailers, I avoided um, even screenshots, I've seen the posters, I knew this was a Ben Wheatley film, I knew it was a uh, uh, the first Ben Wheatley film, like, executive produced, it's got a title card that says, produced by Martin Scorsese, so, I'm a pretty big fan of all of those guys, so I'm probably gonna see this movie, so I tried not to see trailers, tried not to see anything, and I, but I did hear that it was, like, based in the late 70s and in Boston, which, uh, being a guy who went to school in Boston and kind of considers that his second home, I was really, really excited, and being a fan of crime films of the 70s, and especially crime films that take place in Boston, I was really, really excited for that kind of, you know, small-time gangster um, period feel. But that's not what you get with this movie. And that's not that that's a bad thing. But this is basically, and this is spoiler for if you don't even want to know the premise, but why are you watching this video if you don't want to know the premise? This is basically a, a miniature war movie. Uh, one extended 90-minute shootout placed in, a, in one room, in one giant factory room, with... A bunch of colorful characters played by actors you recognize played with the humor dialed up so much that this is maybe the world's most violent Looney Tune. It is not what I was expecting and that's kind of the only thing I've come to expect out of Ben Wheatley and Amy Jump's kind of overall um, careers is that they don't make movies the way you expect them to and that is why I love Free Fire. Very, very simple premise. It is just a, a, a gun deal. Uh, Cillian Murphy and Michael Smiley play uh, IRA uh, rebels who are looking to buy guns in America. They come to Boston to buy guns. And that gun deal, they have their briefcase of money. The other guys bring their, their van load of guns. There is going to be some kind of cross-wire miscommunication that results in maybe 10 or 12 uh, characters shooting each other, taking pot shots from behind cover for the entirety of the movie. If that sounds like something that could get old, the kind of directorial and script writing masterclass of this movie is that the director and screenwriter constantly find ways to add wrinkles, add complications, add difficulty to these sections of people trying to shoot and kill each other. It is, again, not the movie I was expecting, but a movie I am very glad I got. Not to harp on projection, because I know I've talked about like stuff like this in the past, uh, but Free Fire is a movie that you should see in a movie theater if you have a reliable movie theater near you. I saw this last night at a special preview screening at a uh, theater here in Philadelphia. I got my ticket uh, via a, a podcast and website and podcast network around here called Cinepunks. So I really want to thank Josh and Liam uh, for putting this together and for, um, you know, letting me into this. It was a great event and the best thing about it was that this theater, the Ritz East in Philadelphia, was kind of on its best behavior. The surround sound was hooked up and sounded beautiful. This is a movie where you will literally miss jokes and you will miss kind of enjoyment and shocks if you do not have a theater that is properly showing it and the sound is hooked up properly. Sound design is a huge part of what makes this movie so special. 
every gunshot, and there are millions of them, every gunshot is kind of important and needs to sound important, and there is differentiation between the rifles, the handguns, the tiny little handguns that Charteau Copley has. So if this is a, um, if you have a, a theater that you don't trust around you, maybe drive a little further and go to another theater. Or when it hits VOD or whatever, I think it's getting a wide release next Friday, but if, if you don't have a movie theater around you, um, this is a movie that should be played loud. This is far more of an actor's ensemble movie than a lot of uh, um, Ben Wheatley's other films that kind of run on plot. This is a movie that runs on um, basically star power. And you have Brie Larson, um, wonderful, wonderful actor. You have uh, the two big actors I can think of that kind of vie for screen time and laugh time are Army Hammer and Charteau Copley. Uh, th these two are playing to their strengths. Uh, Charteau Copley's strengths for um, broad comedy with silly accents is, 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 is incredibly emblematic in his character Vern, who is um, one of the funnier, sleazier, more pathetic villains you've seen in a while. And Army Hammer's uh, super cool, pot-smoking, um, gun-for-hire Ord. Uh, this this is a guy that like started out strong in, in Social Network, he, where he was playing the Winklevoss twins, and he, he gets all kind of the best lines in that movie, and that's a movie I love. Uh, but he's kind of been either misused or used in movies where no one went to see them. I feel like uh, Free Fire is, is this a... Is an army hammer class of what this, you know, tall kind of Ken doll looking dude can do when you give him like funny comedy bits. He's he's really great in the movie. The the real star for me, uh, Ben Wheatley regular Michael Smiley is is great in this movie as Frank, a kind of um, <laughs> ex alcoholic IRA guy whose uh, sister's married to a junkie who he, like, brings along on this job, who's, like, part of the reason the job gets botched. Everyone in this movie is fantastic, and they get a good amount to do, even though a lot of them, like, get shot and killed horribly. It's a movie that, in its third act, when we start actually killing off people, feels... both feels mean and nihilistic, because some of the characters, you know, die horribly and die really, like, like a bummer deaths, but... The, the characters are so likable, and there's such a weird humanity to the way that this movie is written and these characters are presented. So even these, like, low-life scumbag characters that you, in any other movie, would be kind of the, the, the liability that gets the whole crew in trouble. If you build a whole ensemble cast out of mess-up, unlikable characters, they all become endearing in a certain way. And it's not just the fact that these actors are so good, but it's they're given these great one-liners and this great repartee like immediately um it reminds me it reminds me of a movie like and this is a completely different movie but like something like in the loop where people where the characters are, are not inherently good people or not wouldn't you wouldn't like them in person you wouldn't want to have a beer with them but they're so likable in that movie quality of like that guy's funny i like him like i hope he makes it to the end that's that's what a lot of the characterization in Free Fire is building off of. It. Yeah, so that's that, I, I've been rambling about this movie, but that's that's all I can do: ramble without trying to spoil. Go see it. The whole film, even though it is a shootout, it's not like a John Woo thing. It's more like a a, a film version of a Martin McDonough play. And I know Martin McDonough is now a, an, a, an accomplished director in his own right, an accomplished writer director. Um, but his plays like Lieutenant of Inishmore. Um, or the cripple of Inishman. That's more like what Free Fire feels like to me. It feels like a, a play, but a play where the staging would be impossible because you'd need to have twelve people on a giant stage, and they'd need to be shooting at each other, and bullets would need to be ricocheting all over the place. Um, and that's what Free Fire feels to me, and that's uh, part of the reason I like it uh, so much. So if you if you if you know Martin McDonough's work, if you know film work like In Bruges and Seven Psychopaths, you will like. That's it for the movie. That's all we're going to talk about it. If you want to hear me talk more about Ben Wheatley, it's one of those It's one of those topics I like to talk about a lot. Like I said, that uh, that high-rise video uh, I'll put in the description. And I was a, I was a guest a little while back on a, on a podcast called Scream Addicts. And the, the conceit of the podcast is it's horror professionals, like filmmakers, directors, writers, talk to the, co the, the host Jinx. 
and he asked them to bring a movie with them. So the movie I brought was Kill List. So we talk for an hour plus about Kill List and why it's so good. Um, so I'll put also put that link in the description, like I put all links when I talk about movies, books, stuff like that. All the links are down there. Today's book recommendation, because I wanted to uh, keep with the theme of 70s uh, Boston gangster stories, why not go right to the source? It's George V. Higgins' The Friends of Eddie Coyle. The Friends of Eddie Coyle is a fantastic novel if you haven't read it, and if you've only seen the movie, the novel is pretty much exactly the same, uh, but it's, it's, it's beautiful, and those monologues um, are wonderful to read. It's, it's, it's one of my favorite movies, one of my favorite books. If you haven't read it, if, you're, if you like crime at all, you gotta read it. And because I feel like I'm cheating my regular horror viewers by talking about a movie with shooty guns and Irish accents, I'd like to recommend an extra horror book if you really need your horror fix this week. This was a book, and this is very rare this happens, but I was uh, emailed I would like an ARC, if I would like an advanced review copy of this book, The Girl from Raw Blood by Catriona Ward. Um, usually when I get press releases or emails and stuff like that, I, I don't I don't really mean to ignore them, but I, I just kind of like I look at them and I think like, oh, this seems like this seems like I would owe someone something if I like took their movie or took their book or something like that. If it's really want something I want to check out, I just buy it or I rent it um, and I watch it and if I don't like it, I don't say anything about it. Uh, but this book, uh, publicist that source books got in touch with me and uh, asked me if I wanted to read it and the the, the, the blurbs were from like, Mike Mignola, the description read like something I'd actually want to read and actually would cover on the show. And after reading it, yeah, it's something I like and it's something I would cover on the show. It is um, a British gothic uh, horror novel that to me feels more like, feels more American than it does British. It feels like a uh, southern gothic to me. It feels like kind of that uh, southern dark family secrets conspiring to ruin multiple generations kind of thing. Like the films of Guillermo del Toro, dense as is any book with a genealogy chart in the front of it, but it is really, really, really enjoyable. And I mean enjoyable in a soul-crushing and depressing kind of way. You will like it, Girl from Raw Blood. Check it out. Thank you, Sourcebooks, for sending me a copy. All right, that's two book reviews. That's like 15 minutes of me rambling about one of my favorite directors, uh, Free Fire, The Friends of Eddie Coyle, The Girl from Raw Blood, all of these things are worth your time, money, and effort to consume them, so go check them out. My name is Adam Caesar. I write books as well, but I try not to berate you with them. If you want to check out any of my work, if you want to have a little sampler pack, you, you can sign up for my mailing list. There's a link in the description, as always. Uh, if you like this video, please hit like. If you really like this video, please subscribe. There's a thousand of you now. Whoa, that's amazing. If you have questions or comments or concerns, or you want to tell me that my face is dumb and that I'm wrong about H.P. Lovecraft, you can tell me so in the comments section. It was good talking to you. Goodbye until next week.